we're going to look at how to how to keep pressing on, how to keep going when things don't necessarily look like uh, what you had hoped or what you had thought. Um, so the first thing we got to do is we have to realize who we are and who God is in the situation. Um, and I really think it's good. I mean, this has kind of been a theme of mine for a little while, you know, that it's, it's not about us um, in a certain way as far as like, I think sometimes we put so much emphasis on um, our ability to make things happen when in the end, like as long as we're faithful to God and as long as we're following his plan and his, his purpose for our life, um, that is the main goal is to, to get close to him and to follow him um, in those ways. And I think so many times, especially with the American gospel, uh, we make it so much about achieving um, when the goal of achievement is to really just to achieve him and not to achieve the things. Um, so let's look at some verses to, to help with this a little bit, and then we're going to expand on a little bit of it. Um, so let's look at Psalms 103, first of all. Uh, such, such a good chapter. But we'll start with verse 11. Verse 10, just to make us a little happier here. He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our offenses. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love towards those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. You know, I think sometimes, a lot of times, it's really easy to um, feel alone, to feel like you're the only one out there who is going through whatever you're going through at this time, to, to feel like you're going through something that there's no one else that can relate, that there's no one else looking at you. But the Lord of the universe, who it says is higher than the highest heavens, has love for you. And as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. That means that the Lord, like, the Lord has compassion on you. He knows, he sees, he is the one who made you, informed you, and who thinks about you and, and has a delight in you because you're his creation. He, he made you and he wants to have that relationship with you. Um, so, that's something that to like keep in perspective here is that like, yes, in the grand scheme of things, it's not about us in that way, but at the same time, like the Lord loves and cares for us at the same time, even though, as we're going to see um, in verse 14, for he knows what we are made of, remembering that we are dust. And as for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like a flower in the field, and when the wind passes over it, it vanishes, and in its place is no longer known. But, this is this but here, from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is towards those who fear him, and his righteousness towards the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember and observe his instructions. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. So whenever we talk about um, in Matthew 6, you know, seeking first the kingdom, like that's so much greater than just the expanse of our lives, than just the timeline of who we are and the timeline of our time on this earth compared to eternity. So everything we do has to have that eternal aspect. And I think um, it's so easy to lose perspective realizing that, that our timeline is this, but God's timeline is this. And whenever we look at our lives from heaven's perspective is how does this affect this? Not how does, let's see, if our timeline is here, not how does this moment right now affect here, it's how does this moment right now affect here that affects here? And that's how we look at things from heaven's perspective and having that mind of, um, seeking first the kingdom because his kingdom is eternal and it's greater than anything that we could ever be on earth by ourselves, And we're just part of it. And that's my point in saying 
that it's not about us is that once we once we have a higher vision once we have a higher perspective we realize that our our life not only has meaning right now but it has an eternal meaning and it and it has an eternal impact on what happens for the kingdom so let's look at some practical things of how to do this and that is found just a couple chapters over um, here in Psalms 105 so verse 1 Give thanks to the Lord and call on his name. Proclaim his deeds among the peoples. Excuse me. So, you know, what do you have that you can be thankful for? Just stop and think. I think that is some of the, uh, some of the stinkiest things that happen in our lives sometimes is that we have these great moments where God does something amazing. And then the very next thing we do is we find ourselves looking at, well, what didn't happen or what happened after that. Whenever we, we just kind of gloss over um, the good that God has done in our lives because of, oh, I, you know, whatever's happening. I'm not going to give too many examples, but, you know, just we, we have this amazing thing that God does and then we forget to look at it for very long. And we may say, yay in the moment, but then something else happens and we forget about whatever it is that God just done, did for us. So we have to, it's a, it's a really conscious, sometimes a hard thing to get through uh, to remember what God has done for you in your life. I know that God has done so many things for me and, and like, and time after time after time, I have to remind myself, this is why it's good to have a journal. It's good to write things down. It's good to write things down for you. It's good to, to write things down for those who come after you about what God has done in your life. Because if we didn't have, if we didn't have the Bible, we wouldn't know what happened to Israel. We wouldn't know all the wonderful, mighty things that God did in their days. And if we didn't have the letters of Paul, we wouldn't know what happened there. If we didn't have Acts, if we didn't have the disciples writing down the works of Jesus and the things that Jesus did, all the wonderful miracles that he did and all the things that he brought to the earth, we wouldn't know those things. And those who lived them would have forgotten them and they probably would have died. Those memories would have died within a few generations if those things hadn't been written down. So we need to give thanks to the Lord and call on his name. Remember, it's not about us. So whenever we realize that it's not about everything that we can do, and it's about everything that he can do through us, and that everything that he can show, and that we get to partner with him in the earth, we get to call on his name, not on our name. We can't do it in ourselves. like, And we can do so much more than what we ever think we can do whenever we do it with him. So that's when we call on his name and proclaim his deeds among the peoples. So not only remembering what has happened and all the things that he has done, but also proclaiming and telling others about what he has done. That gives you so much. Have you ever, have you ever like spoken to someone about God and what God has done? And they might not even know God at all. And you just, you have that joy of like, hey, I just proclaimed something that the Lord has done in my life. It's just such a great thing and um, to relive and to remember the testimonies of the deeds that God has done for you. So think of something. I mean, and there is something in your life that God has done, even if it's small or what you think is small um, or it's something else, you know, like think of it and proclaim it to other people. Tell people like, hey, this is what God did for me. Do you know what God did? Look at him. Brag on God, not yourself, not your circumstances. Brag on God because remember, what you think about, what you speak is what is what you become. And what you look at is what you become. So if you're looking at all the th good things that God has done, then you get to expect God to do greater things. And then your faith is in a higher place for God to do those things again. So now we're going to keep going though. Um, sing to him. Sing praise to him and tell about all his wonderful works. So 
you know, we enter his, yeah, I'm getting it right. We enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and we enter his courts with praise. So we enter his thanks, gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. So we're thankful for all the things that he has done that gets us going, that gets us moving somewhere because that gets us moving towards him. Okay. And whenever we're not towards him is whenever, because he is all, he is everything that is good. He's embodied or he embodies all that is good. Everything that is good surrounds him. Like he is the giver of all good things, right? So if you're far away from him, guess what? You're far away from his goodness and all the good things that he has planned for you. So whenever you begin to be thankful, you move into his gates. And whenever you begin to praise, you move into his courts. Now, th this isn't, it's not necessarily like a formula, like, okay, so I'm going to thank him for one thing and praise him for another. But at the same time, like do both, you know, like let it become part of your heart. Let it become part of what you do every day is to thank him and praise him. Um, you know, whenever Jesus gives the, um, the prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Like, it is your name that we are thankful for. It is your name that is that is great and mighty above all. Like, man, that's just amazing. So honor his holy name. Just what I was talking about right there. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. So whenever we begin to remember the things that he has done, to speak them out, to praise him for those things, we actually get to rejoice because Number one, we're reminding ourselves, we're reminding our own spirit, but then we get to speak that out to other people and it becomes um, a source of joy for us to be able to look at the Lord and to be able to remember what he's done and to be able to speak those things and to speak the testimony because whenever we speak that testimony, it's just like it's happening again. I just, I will tell you guys, um, I just told someone about something that happened to me um, and honestly, it happened a while ago. And I just, I'd never had an opportunity to tell this person about it. And whenever I got to tell them, like, I don't, I don't know if they, what they thought about it, you know, but I just know that me telling them, me speaking that out and me proclaiming what God has done in my life, it was just amazing. And it made me feel like I was in that moment again. So you get to go back and you get to relive the moment, which by the way, I'll, I'll tell you guys, whenever you relive moments like this, um, you know, there's a spirit behind something whenever you say it, and especially whenever you say good things, but also, you know, whenever you speak about the negative, like whenever you say, oh, this happened to me or that happened to me, you're speaking, you're reliving the testimony of that. So you're actually reliving the negative thing that happened and you're putting that doubt and that fear and unbelief in your heart whenever you, uh, whenever you relive it in that way. Now, obviously they're speaking fact, okay? But whenever we dwell on it and whenever we we live in that moment again, we're actually telling the testimony of that of that negative moment of that bad thing that happened that that we don't that we're placing our unbelief in. We're actually placing our belief in that bad thing. So we're placing our unbelief there and we're not believing God for what he can do and the way that he can bring that about to something better in our lives. So just remember that. Like remember to to guard your heart and in guarding your heart, also guard your speech. Guard the things that come out of your mouth that way so they won't become part of who you are. You know, whenever we speak about the about the things that God has done already, then those things get ingrained in us. They're they're in our memory again, and then they become part of our heart again because our I don't know how this works, but our chest is resonating like the words that God has spoken, the things that God has done. And the glories that God has brought in our lives, so we are we are recreating um, that moment with God, and it's just so amazing. Um, so, verse four: Search for the Lord and for His strength, and seek His face always. And um, that just reminded me of Second Corinthians twelve. Uh, let's go to verse eight. Paul's talking about the thing that. Um, the thorn in his flesh. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times for him to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weakness so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in, my weak in weaknesses, insults, catastrophes, persecutions, and pressures because of Christ. 
for when I am weak, then I am strong. I love this replays in my head all the time is a thing that Bobby Connor said, you know, like he said that God told him that he's found finally found a people weak enough to work in. And it's whenever you think that you can do things in your own strength. It's whenever you think that you can do things on your own and, and power through it, you know, then you're in pride and you start looking at yourself instead of looking at God and you look at the things that you can do and not the things that he can do and the way that he can work in your life because you're trying to do it on your own because you think you're powerful enough when you are not as powerful as God is. And he can do it so much better than we can. So remember the wonderful works he has done, his wonders and the judgments he has pronounced. So we give thanks, we praise him, we honor him, we search for his strength, and then we remember what he has done. And that's what I was getting at in the beginning, is just remembering, keeping those things uh, to your memory, keeping those things in front of you, keeping the things that God has said, that God, that God has shown you in front of you all the time, because whenever you seek him, whenever you're looking at him and you're moving towards him in that way, then you're moving towards his goodness and you're moving towards his grace and you're moving towards everything that he is and everything that he can bring in your life. So just do that. Remember him. Remember the things that he has done. Thank him for them. Speak about them. Praise him for them. And then remember them again. So I'll leave you guys with that. Hopefully that encouraged somebody. I know just speaking it, just saying it has encouraged me. Um, Leave in the comments if it's helped you out at all. Um, you know, and I speak about the good things that God has done. That's that's one way you can do. Just put in the comments what is something amazing that God has done in your life, either recently or in the past. One of your testimonies. Testimonies are good things. We need to have more testimony uh throughout the body of Christ. I think sometimes we get, like I said, we get so into our own selves and into our isolated little bubble. Uh, that we forget to tell other people what God has done in our lives. So let's do that. Um, encourage somebody today and remind them who God is. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a good day, night, whatever time it is. Bye.